Foster for SmartSync. Uh, we're a Jackson, Mississippi-based technology firm that creates smart grids for utilities. We differ from most of our competition in that we leverage the existing cellular networks as the communications backbone for smart grid build-outs. Uh, we work with over 140 utilities at present, and we've been doing this for more than 10 years. You hear the term smart grid frequently these days, and I thought it might be useful to take just a few minutes to make sure everyone understands what the smart grid is, or more specifically, what it hopes to become. And all right, it works. Um, okay, there's a joke that everyone's heard already, but it, it makes sense to use it here, so I'm going to tell you. Um, you've all heard the joke that Alexander Graham Bell would look at his smartphone and have no idea what it is, yet Thomas Edison would look at our current electric grid and say, got it, that's mine. I, uh, I recognize that, that's what I invented. So the need for the electric grid to be modernized was clearly way overdue. A smart grid is merely a digitized version of our current electric grid. It takes the existing electric grid and makes it a two-way interactive internet of electricity. When fully built out, it will make both producer and consumer more efficient. The amount of electricity produced but not used should radically decrease. Consumers will use electricity more efficiently because they will know where they are wasting energy, which devices are energy hogs, what times of day they are using energy effectively, and research has shown that given this information, the average household will lower their usage by up to 20% just by being more informed. Blackouts will be avoided as distributors will have information that tells them in advance of a dangerous overload approaching. Do you have any idea how many billions of dollars that will save annually? But in the meantime, there's an enormous amount of work to do. How big of an opportunity is this? Well, it's huge because utilities, and there are about 3,500 of them in the U.S. alone, are almost all going to convert to a smart grid. And depending upon size, they will spend between a few million to a few billion each building out their respective smart grid. And it's not a one-time expenditure. It will keep growing and expanding. But don't take it from me. Here's what a few others think. John Chambers in Cisco said, the smart grid opportunity may be as large or larger than the original internet. GE's Jeffrey M. Elton said the smart grid may well represent the single greatest economic opportunity we see in our lifetime. Hike Research estimates that the global market for smart grid will, re will reach $171 billion annually by 2014. Super investor John Doerr said the internet represented a $1 trillion opportunity. The smart grid represents a $4 trillion opportunity. So any way you measure it, this is a huge initiative. Hundreds, if not thousands of companies are retooling to take advantage of this unprecedented opportunity. Okay, so why does this matter to the, this audience here at CTIA? Two reasons. One, because networks are a huge part of the smart grid. Hundreds of millions and eventually billions of devices will be deployed across these grids. These are smart devices that need to communicate to consumers back to the IT department, the mothership utility, and other devices in between. Advanced communication is the key to the smart grid. In the Wireless, wireless Week show daily that was handed out today, uh, the article on the MTM uh, projects that 2.1 billion connections, uh, MTM connections, will be established by the year 2020. They further go on to say that 62% of those will be in the utility sector, in the smart grid sector. So in the M to M world, smart grid is clearly the mother load of opportunity. The second reason is that smart grid represents the single most attractive incremental revenue opportunity the carrier operators have, period. There is no close second. Unlike phones, there are no upfront subsidies with smart meters. Carriers don't have the same customer care issues like you do with phones. The infrastructure, for the most part, is already there, and the amount of bandwidth that smart meters and other devices consume is negative. It's a very attractive proposition. So, networks are a big part of the smart grid. That's irrefutable. What has developed, however, is a furious debate as to whether utilities should utilize the existing wireless networks as SmartSync uh, believes, or should they build from scratch their own private closed communications networks? While the answer may seem obvious to a, a group at a conference known as CTIA, a 
fact is that the, an overwhelming number of America's utilities have chosen to pass on AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, and others and attempt to build from scratch their own private wireless networks. Why would they choose to go this route? This is a multi-layered multi answer for the most simple reason up until recently was cost. When utilities analyze the cost in their terms of renting network time from the operators versus the long-term ownership cost of running their own network, the numbers steered them into the ownership camp. Utilities generally define the lifetime of the system as 15 to 20 years. This is a critical point. Believe it or not, they found that building and maintaining their own network would be cheaper than using one of the existing commercial wireless carriers. Now, the complexities of running a network may end up being greater than anticipated. But from a pure economics basis, it has looked more attractive to build and own for a utility than to take advantage of what already exists for that. And in overwhelming numbers, that's where they went. Now, I mentioned all of this in a historical perspective of what has happened in the past five to seven years. Over the past year and a half, carrier operators have become much more aggressive with their pricing for smart grid build outs. This is good. But we're just now seeing this show up in the marketplace. If you've never sold to utilities, uh, it's a, it's, there's a learning curve there. Utilities sometimes take two to three years or longer to evaluate smart grid network options. Then they have large, slow request for proposal processes, pilots and testing, all of which can easily take several years, a tremendous amount of time. So the price change the carriers started making in late 2009 is just now starting to show up in the marketplace. And it will continue to in the late 2011 and really into 2012, 13, and beyond. Yeah, I was supposed to go to this one about five minutes ago. Let me illustrate how dramatic the price change has been uh, to utilities. Uh, we have been in the smart grid business, let's say, for over 10 years. Back in 2001, on a per meter per month basis, we were charging utilities approximately $12 per meter per month. And this was primarily for commercial and industrial usages. You fast forward to where we are in March of 2011, and that same apples to apples price is now, uh, to make a universal statement, less than 50 cents per meter per month. And in many cases, depending on volume, depending on volume can go a good bit uh, lower than that. At SmartSync, we have often felt like the lone soldier on the hill. <laughs> For over 10 years, we've been preaching that utilities would be better off using the existing wireless networks than building their own closed proprietary networks. We provide an entire turnkey smart grid leveraging commercial wireless networks. We believe that it is far easier, provides greater bandwidth for future expandability, is as or more secure, it's open, places IP in every device, and finally, this option is no longer more expensive. Hallelujah. Our sales force is very, very happy about that. Believe me, utilities have noticed, one by one, IT experts in America's major utilities have started acknowledging the benefits of smart grids built with cellular as the communications backbone. And as we move past smart grids simply being automatic meter reading and into higher bandwidth applications such as prepay, EV monitoring, distributed automation, and many others, the benefits of the wide pipes of cellular are clear. But SmartSync is just one company in the big picture. What we need as an industry is for all of the carrier operators, the CTIA, the chipset manufacturers, anyone who has a vested interest in commercial wireless to come together with a single voice to tout the benefits to the utilities of using commercial wireless as a communications backbone over building private, closed, limited bandwidth bandwidth networks that don't talk to each other. Don't get me wrong, we realize there is a need in certain instances for private networks, but for the vast majority, for the vast majority of utilities, using the existing commercial networks makes so much more <coughs> sense. So as a group, we need to take advantage of political connections, sizable marketing dollars, and business relations with utilities across America. The smart grid landscape is clearly shifting towards commercial wireless. Those of us in this room have a common goal of seeing that happen. As they say, a rising tide will lift all boats. Thank you very much.